guys, it's been a while, but welcome to a brand new episode of In Studio with Stefan Fillion. For the next three videos, I'm going to be doing three track walkthroughs where I take you through the whole project file for one of my new releases. And um, we'll be going through three different tracks. So the first video is going to be on a collaboration I did with Call Me Ghost. Uh, it's titled The PK and it's out now on Southern State Music. Um, this track is a pure club banger. It's just um, a really, really big club track kind of written for the dance floor. Then the next two tracks we will do are going to be uh, my new vocal collaboration with Jade MacDonald, which is called Divinity, and it's going to be out next week at ADE on Above All Records. And for that one, we'll do a video that has the, the track walkthrough in Ableton, and then the vocal processing and the vocal walkthrough in Logic. And then lastly, the third video will be on my new uplifting Psy uh, it's kind of like a crush on a track which is titled D1 and which will also be out now next week on Above All Records. So let's get straight into this video. Um, like I said, this is my release on Southern State Music. It's out now and it's a collaboration with Call Me Ghost. So here it is, guys. Um, I'm going to start from the top down. Um, first of all, there's two dummy trigger tracks for the sidechain compressor. These are just... Um, MIDI tracks with a kick drum, however the channel is muted, so there's no audio from these, they're just used to trigger sidechain. Then we've got our drums, and our drums sound like this. And so this consists of a top kick, which sounds like this. It's just a sample that we've cut all of the low end off. Um, I've made it quite short on the envelope because we only want the initial click. It's got a compress on it with a, an open attack um, to allow the click to come through and to give it a bit more attack on the, um, the actual transient. And then I'm running it through a limiter, which I don't usually do, but uh, I, it just kind of gave me that aggressive sound on the click that I needed. Then we've got the low kick, which sounds like this. And it's also a sample. Uh, it's also just got some slight compression. And you can see here the EQ just to uh, kind of clean the low end. Cuts it off by about 40 hertz. And then two slight boosts and a bit of a cut here in the mid-range. And then these two kicks get run into a kick bus. And that's what they sound like together in the bus and the two of them are just compressed uh, very light compression here and they're going through a maximizer um, I mean limiter and a maximizer and I don't usually limit a kick this much it's just for this particular track um, it kind of made us sit in the mix uh, a bit better and it kind of gave us that aggressive attack that we needed then we've got our claps and our snares um, it's a basic sample two samples actually that we've layered as you can see on the MIDI and I, what I've done is I've used the actual saturation on the impulse drum machine and I'm running it through a utility to make it mono because I'm going to show you now I've actually duplicated this clap and I've panned one hard left and one hard right so just made it mono to keep the center of the stereo image clean I've got a saturator a dynamic tube and overdrive just to add to the distortion and just to keep making it nice and crunchy. Um, as you can see from source, I take down the volume on the actual drum machine and I did that for the kick as well. Um, for you guys who have seen my previous tutorials at www.stephanfillion.com, you'll know I speak a lot about um, headroom and gain structuring, and that's why we're taking the volume down from source. And then I've got an equalizer, um, obviously cutting out a lot of the high, lower frequencies um, to leave space for the kick and also because they're sitting so wide. And then a compressor with a very quick attack and quick release. And this is just um, these claps and snares, they were a bit harsh. So this just gives us a bit of control over the transient. 
And if you listen to them, they sound like this. And with the kick. Then next up, I took the exact same snare samples and I just made a really big reverb clap or snare. And so you can see I took the same two samples and I just ran it through a reverb with a really long decay time. I have the saturation, once again cutting off the low end. I have a compressor. Uh, with quite an aggressive compression ratio here um, and threshold and this just um, helps bring out the the reverb and the the softer transients in that reverb tail and then I have a sidechain compressor just to make this pump along with the kick and then I've got a reverse clap and it sounds like this and if you listen to that with the other snares and claps And this is basically just the same clap or snare I was using at the top. I just reversed it and then cut off some of the low end and gave it some compression. Then we have this white noise sound, which I use as a kind of a percussive element. It's a very basic white noise click from Silent. Uh, cut off all the bass and then I run that through a delay with a different time set to the left and the right to give it a bit of a ping pong effect and then also a side chain compression which we will then set to work with our side chain trigger track and this sounds like this then I have a crash which is just a sample um, it already had reverb and effects on the sample itself I just cut off the low end and boosted the tops a bit and then I'm using a simple delay to delay the one side by 10 milliseconds just to get it to sit a bit wider in the mix sounds like this then we have these drum falls which are using the build up and the break then I have my open hi-hat and basically with this it's coming from this impulse here um, and all I did is I cut all the bass I gave it some overdrive to make it a bit more crunchy and then I used this delay effect here to delay one side by a few milliseconds to get it to sit wider in the mix so you can hear how that sounds and then we got some more hi-hats here and you can see my project is a bit messy <laughs> there's some tracks here that we're not using um, but then I have these percussion loops and what I've done here is I took a, a loop that I liked and I took this loop and I using the Ableton Live clip editor I cut out the pieces I didn't want so if we listen to this it sounds like this and then what I did is I duplicated it and panned the second one right so one's panned left the other one's panned right and then here I actually added different parts of this sample and so I cut out um, I cut out the parts that I wasn't using from this channel and added them to this channel and so it sounds like this and so you see just um, having the various hits on either the left or the right panned channels um, just gives it a really nice swing and a bit of a kind of like a just fills out the stereo image and then here we have two shaker loops quite basic um, one panned left one panned right two different loops each just with the bass cut off and some side chain compression and then finally for our drums I have a ride and yeah we put all those together and we get this then on the actual drum bus itself I have 
a utility, just taking the gate down a bit, some very light compression, an auto filter, which I used in the break to kind of filter out the drums, and then I'm also parallel compressing this whole drum bus. So you'll see here, um, I've all the way up to zero dB, and you'll see it's going to an effects track here, which is my parallel compression. And I'll play it for you with and without the compression, and you can hear what a big difference it makes. It just brings out the dynamics, it helps make my drums just a, a lot more aggressive and punchy, and just sound a lot more full. So that's it for the drums. Next up, let's go have a look at the bass line. Um, this bass line was partly inspired by um, some of the tracks that JOC and Seedvin Real were doing. Uh, so if we come here, first of all we have a sub bass. And all this is is a very, very basic single oscillator pure sine wave coming from Synth. It's running through Renaissance R bass from Waves. And this is an amazing plugin that I use when I want to bring out harmonics in bass. And this was also given away for free on the last Black Friday, which was pretty cool. So thank you to Waves for that. And this sound, if we listen to it, it sounds like this. So as you can hear, it's just a basic rolling sine sub bass with the kick. Sounds like this. And so I use the utility to make it mono. And that's because with the, your sub bass frequencies and your lower frequencies, you always want them sitting in the center of the mix. Um, I'm using a very aggressive sidechain compressor. And I cleaned up the low end a bit just by cutting off about 30 or maybe even 40 hertz on the low end. Um, and then I cut off all the high end because it's not needed because we're going to be using different layers to add the high end. So that's my sub bass. Then we've got this bass stab over here. And basically what I've done is um, we modified a preset from Synth. It's just a standard like a, a distorted saw um, bass sound. Um, I've made it mono because I've actually got two of these, one panned hard left and one panned hard right. Um, I'm using overdrive, once again, our bass. I'm using equalizer. I cut off the lower frequencies because these are not needed because we are getting our low end from the sub sound bass I just showed you. Um, compression and sidechain compression. And then, like I said, I duplicated this, made a second one, and one is panned left and the other is panned right. And then I put these to a bus, which I'm calling my saw bus. And here I just have a bit more EQ, another compressor to give me a bit more control. Auto filters used in the arrangement process. And then another sidechain compressor. And then you'll hear there's a little bit of delay and reverb, which was done on the actual silent itself. And then Finally, I have a bass pad that I'm using. I'm using this in the break. So here, this is basically, it's the exact same sound we're using for the top layer, but you can just see it's uh, much longer notes in the MIDI. This is actually the, the pads. This is the lower notes from the pads that we'll be showing you a little later. And so, overdrive, a bit crusher, our bass, my equalizer, and I use a bit of automation here, and an auto filter that's cutting off the high end, so you can hear this sound. And then just a compressor, and there's a sidechain compressor, but as you can see, the trigger track isn't being used here, so it's not being sidechained. And that's it for the bass. It's quite basic, but if you listen to all the layers with the drums and the kick, you can hear it's quite a, a driving bass line that really works well in the club.
Next up, we've got our two leads. So the one that we have first, just trying to put these in order, is the sub lead over here. Sounds like this. It's three layers of the same preset that we've modified from Massive. Um, one layer is kind of the body of the sound. It's sitting center in the mix and it's got all the low end. Sounds like this. You'll see I'm running it through R bass, a compressor, an equalizer where I've cut off some of the highs because the highs are going to be coming from the next two layers. And I've got a side chain compressor just for when the track drops to make a bit of space with the kick and the bass. Then I've got these two top layers. These are the exact same sound, just one sitting left, one is sitting right. Um, these have got all the reverb and the effects on. You can see I've cut the bass from them because they're sitting wider, wider in the mix, so to keep the mix clean, and because the bass is coming from this sub layer. And so they sound like this. And then together. And then on the bus, I'm just running another EQ and an auto filter and a sidechain compressor. And then we have our second lead, which also consists out of two layers. It sounds like this. And one layer with a bit of bit more low end that's sitting a bit more centered in the mix. And then this is the second layer, which is much wider in the mix. Obviously has a lot less bass and has a bit more of the reverb and delay. On these sounds, I'm running it through Isotope Ozone. Um, the reason for this was I just needed this sound to kind of jump out a bit more and have a bit more laugh. Um, I'm not running it through the limiter though, um, but I'm just using um, the rest of the sounds in Isotope. So I'm running it, as you can see, I'm using the multiband compressor and the dynamics, but on the limiter side, there's basically, like it is running through the limiter, but you can see that there's no gain reduction. So I'm not squashing the sound. And then they're bust together, going through a glue compressor and just some final EQ and reverb. Then I have this top ARP sound. Let's, let's sound like this. And it's also used in the break as part of the melody. Um, it's a basic sound from Massive that we kind of just tweaked and that we changed. And it's running through an auto filter, an EQ, and a compressor. And in the mix it sounds like this. Then I have the second arpeggiator, which is running two tracks from Silent, um, the same track, just one panned left, one panned right. Um, quite a basic sound, just has a bit of EQ cutting off the low end, and then on the bus, some sidechain compression, and it sounds like this. And the reason for this was I just kind of like that dirty electronic feel it was given to the track and it filled in quite a nice space in the arrangement. Then over here, um, something I still need to show you, I've got this reverse stab, which actually works with this sub, um, sub lead. And basically what this is, if I line these up, is it sounds like this.
and basically it's just it's the first note from this sub lead that we've recorded with a really big reverb so as you can see the tail here and then we reversed it and then we put more reverb on it and a sidechain compressor and so if you play this with the sub lead you can hear it just kind of leads up to it and builds it. And so, yeah, it just falls in. It's, uh, it just kind of builds a bit of tension before the main lead comes in. Then next up, we've got our pads. Um, I'm using a pad from Silent, which is a modified preset called Anjuna pad. And I'm running that through an equalizer and a compressor and some sidechain compression. And it sounds like this. And then these other layers here, these are sounds that I've bounced off from Logic. Um, so you can see they're audio tracks. Um, I just wanted some strings and like a choir sound. I couldn't really find that in my Ableton banks. So I got it from Logic's orchestral bank. And it sounds like this. And yeah, these, I just took the audio files straight into Ableton and then I put on some reverb, some EQ to remove the low end, a compressor and some sidechain compression. And then last but not least, um, all of our effects and the glue and the noise that kind of just gets the track to have a bit of life and just have all the transitions flow better into each other. And so we've got this sound, which is like a rising pitch And it's a sound from Massive that we've pitched up and we've automated the filter cutoff. And it's got a compressor, an equalizer, and a sidechain compressor. And in the mix, it sounds like this. We've got our white noise, which is just standard white noise from Silent with an EQ8 and a lot of reverb and obviously sidechain compression. We've got some reverse crashes and crashes and down here as well. And there we have our booms. And that's it guys. If you put all this together, we get the final completed project for the PK, the Transmix. Um, I hope you guys have enjoyed this walkthrough. If you guys enjoy the track, please support it. Um, it is available now on Southern State Music. And like I said, in the next two videos, I'll be showing you my new vocal collaboration with Jade McDonald, Divinity, and we'll also go through my Cyan uplifting track, D1. So just to keep an eye out on Facebook and my website, www.stephanfillion.com, for info on when these tutorials will be releasing. And yeah, let me know what your feedback is and what you would like to see in future tutorials. Thanks, guys. I hope you enjoyed it.